So I suppose those of you that spent the past few months kind of worrying, panicking about, freaking out about a potential purchase of WWE by a Saudi-backed group, you can now breathe a sigh of relief because that indeed did not come to fruition. However, you know, these past couple of years, you've had some huge stories in professional wrestling. Last year, Vince McMahon's retirement, arguably one of the biggest stories of professional wrestling history. Now, <laughs> you come to April 2023, and you get another massive story as big as any, certainly in recent wrestling history, that's for sure. And that is the news that CNBC put out, the reports they put out uh, early on Sunday before we got to night two of WrestleMania. And that is that there was an agreement in place, in principle, for the WWE to sell to Endeavor, the same group that owns the UFC. And as we found out Monday, those reports were valid. It was accurate. There was Vince McMahon and his mustache being interviewed alongside Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel. And wow, this actually happened. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is something. That's certainly something a lot of people have opinions on. And nothing wrong with that. But... A lot of, I'm sure, irrational opinions as well, right? And people getting outside of their area of competency. And look, like when it comes to corporate acquisitions, mergers, I am certainly no guru, right? I'm certainly not a subject matter expert. Understand some basic things about it. And I will talk about that in this video, but that is the extent of the knowledge. Not going to sit there and represent like a be all end all, or you should take everything I say as the absolute gospel. But this is obviously a big frickin' deal, right? So what does the WWE sale to Endeavor really mean? Let's start off first with some of the most obvious things. The UFC does not own WWE. The WWE does not own UFC, period. That's not how any of this works. Get it? Got it? Good. The UFC and WWE are both under the same umbrella because they are owned by the same parent company, Endeavor. Understand that distinction? Good. What this is going to result in is a new publicly traded company. I believe the ticker that they're going to use is TKO. So... They're all, uh, UFC and WWE are going to kind of combine and become this new publicly traded company. With Endeavor having a 51% controlling interest and WWE shareholders having the other 49%. This new joint venture results in a valuation of around $21 billion or so. A little over $12 billion from the UFC side of the house and the valuation of WWE put at $9 billion. Vince McMahon wanted that fucking $9 billion. He got that $9 billion valuation. Crazy to me. Like, go big or go home, or if you're the Russell Fuhrer, you wear a mustache. At 77. Okay, then. So anyways, those are some of the most obvious things, right? But then you start to dig a little deeper. What about Vince McMahon? What does this mean for Vince McMahon? He's now the executive chairman of the combined company. He will report to Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel. He made a shit ton of money from this deal. A couple billion dollars. He's going to continue to do so. Funny little side note here. Dana White will remain as president of the UFC, but that technically means that he's lower on the pecking order, lower on the food chain than Vince McMahon. How about that shit, huh? <laughs> well, don't get it twisted. He's been talking about Vince still going to be the lord and overseer of the WWE side of the business. Captain of creative, here he comes. It's coming, and it's already fucking here. For those of you that are going to focus on that, like that's the most important thing, you're going to freak out like crazy about it. 
That's what it's gonna mean. <laughs> Vince is back, baby! <laughs> but ultimately, you look at it first and you say, the guy who was the 80% shareholder of WWE, what does it mean for Vince? It means a shit ton of money for him. Now and in the future. Don't ever get it twisted. There was no other reason to do this deal. The only reason to me that he did this deal outside of money, which is more factual based, right? This is more opinion based, was that between Stephanie and Shane and Triple H, he didn't trust a damn damn one of them with his baby when he was gone. That's what it comes down to. He didn't trust a single one of them. And his thought was, well, if I'm going to sit there and have Nick Khan potentially be the heir apparent here to me someday, why wouldn't I then sell out and make a shit ton of money in the process? Kind of logical, right? Right. So what does this mean for WWE then? Based off of Endeavor's history when they purchased UFC, I think it was back in 2016. You can learn some things from that for sure. And you assume it's going to carry over here to WWE. WWE is still going to be largely in charge of running WWE's daily operations. going to be left relatively alone, left to their own devices, which is how it should work. Nick Khan is going to remain the president of WWE. So with Nick Khan there, you already know this is a thing that happens. But certainly with this merger, what so often happens? Cost cutting. It did with UFC, I think, back in 2016. Folks that follow UFC more closely than me can keep you honest here. I think they cut like 10 to 15% of their staff and might have saved like 40, 50 million dollars, something like that. And WWE is going to do some massive house cleaning. They are going to cut costs. That's an inevitability. You'll hear the corporate buzzwords of reduce redundancies and increase and maximize synergies and all that other bullshit, which just means fuck some people, they're getting fired laid off my ass they get fired and more money is going into the pocket of the most well-off shareholders that's how a corporate merger works that's how this is working here i would expect the cost cutting to ultimately result in something around 50 to 100 million dollars in reduced expenses just a, a guess but an educated guess right it is an educated guess some other things i think about this could potentially strengthen WWE and UFC, like independently, but also together in terms of a stronger negotiating position in their next round of the television deals conversations. Because now UFC could offer up something related to WWE. WWE could offer up something related to UFC. Now all of a sudden you're going to have a bunch of other brands wanting to get into this business, right? Like, it could potentially, and that's what key word here is potentially, strengthen the position for WWE independently, UFC independently, and them to get together under Endeavor from a negotiating TV rights fees and rights deal standpoint. Um, you could certainly envision some possible long-term changes to the live stream strategy. You know, UFC with their deal with ESPN+, Plus, WWE with their deal with Peacock. It'll be interesting to see in the next couple of years how that all plays out. You may not see much change. You might see seismic massive change and they kind of come together as a big package and somebody like Amazon or Apple TV or Netflix or somebody drops their fucking pants to get that sizable package. Something that I think WWE fans in particular are certainly sensitive to is with years of being spoiled by WWE Network and later Peacock to the point where perhaps WWE undervalued its own asset for the sake of getting more eyeballs on their product. You know, could there be some changes in the future tied to live streaming strategy in terms of the live event pay-per-view business model? That's very possible, if not likely, if nothing else for, you know, you might get to a place in a couple of years where WrestleMania is going to cost more. It's going to be a premium buy, meaning you got to fork over additional money. Your Peacock subscription or whatever subscription ain't going to get the job done. I wouldn't be surprised at all if there was some type of modification or adjustment to the WWE pay-per-view model as it currently exists. 
This certainly also creates a unique opportunity for cross promotion, right? Now that they are all under the same umbrella, it could create opportunities for WWE related elements to be cross promoted on UFC, vice versa. Could be mutually beneficial for both. Something that is kind of quasi competitors, you're not really as open to or comfortable with doing, but part of the same umbrella, all on the same team, could unleash some future potential possibilities that you wouldn't have envisioned before. Uh, and from a WWE standpoint, like this is certainly going to have an opportunity to create massive new revenue streams, additional revenue um, from the WWE side of the business. That feels like an eventuality to me. Um, but all of that you could talk about. And we'll find out more details as the sale kind of gets finalized over the coming months. Yeah, you know, but the ultimate thing here is above all anything else. I just, I'm stunned. I never in a million years, first, never thought that Vince McMahon would retire, although it was more of like a forced, a long-term leave last year. But that was like something you never expected to see. You expected this motherfucker to sit there and work at the company until the day he dies. And in the age of AI, you feel like Vince's new model for WWE is death! Is only the beginning. And he's trying to create an AI version of himself that will run the company in perpetuity for fucking ever. But with this deal, Vince McMahon gave up at least some control. And while you can say, well, when we took the WWE public in 1999, he lost a version of autonomy and control. And true to a degree, but I mean, for Christ's sakes, he was the 80% shareholder. He was the overwhelming majority shareholder of WWE. So he still had dictatorial powers for the most part with some annoyances of having to deal with the SEC, having to deal with regulators, having to deal with the general public, the stock market, investors, shareholders, all that shit. Now, at least for him, I guess, with this Endeavor deal, like he'll be a big part of the equation, but he's not ultimately responsible for all of it. I get away from that a little bit, but he gave up control. He has somebody he's going to have to report to. Vince McMahon. He has a boss. WWE is not a family-owned business anymore. That's stunning to me. Of all the things I would have ever thought would happen, I never, honestly, honestly, until maybe the last year or so, ever envisioned this being a possibility. And even then, still had my doubts about it. But it is amazing what somebody will do to make themselves a couple of billion bucks. And that's exactly what the fuck Vince McMahon did. This was a money grab for Grandpa. As he said, I don't want to mess with Linda at home. I don't want to look at her face anymore. I don't like my grandkids. I don't want to fucking be around them. I just want to work because WWE is my one vice, my one addiction in life. And until I get that AI version of myself ready to go to run this company forever, he's got to sit there and be in charge. So you can tell me what you think this sale of WWE to Endeavor means. It's interesting. It means that Vince has made a shit ton of money. And him and some of the key shareholders like Stephanie, Kevin Dunn, you know, Hunter, they're going to make a shit ton of money and continue to make a shit ton of money.